This is Matt with Mal Express Radio. I have with me the legendary Frank Bello of Anthrax. How are you today, man? Matt, I'm doing good. I'm uh, it's a Saturday afternoon freezing my palutes up over here in uh in the, I live in New York and uh winter is fi- is finally here as they've been promising. It's, it, that's what I feel. It's pretty cold outside. Trust me, I feel the pain. I'm in Massachusetts as we speak and it's you know, so I feel like we're suffering this together. <laughs> yeah, it, it's coming, you know, you know, it's, it's only November. I always wait I say, man, November, it's not January, it's not February. You always wonder what the hell is February going to be like. You know, it's like, oh, my God, what's coming, you know? But this uh, is where we live. That's it. Yeah, it could be 60 degrees by next weekend. We never know. <laughs> hey, now it's different. I know. That's how everybody gets sick. You know, you get cold and then hot. And it's like everybody gets sick right after that. It's crazy. And your new autobiography entitled Fathers, Brothers, and Sons Surviving Anguish, Abandonment, and Anthrax, what can you tell fans about your brand new book? Well, it's been out for a, a while now, but um, it's really about me, uh, my, my story of life when I grew up, uh, abandoned uh, when we were younger. My father took off when we were, when I was 10 years old, a uh, family of five. I was the oldest. I went to live with my mom. I went with my grandmother, uh, whose uh, house that Charlie Benanti, my drummer of Anthrax, lived in because we were related. And I went to live in that house. We, we played music together, and that's how we grew up. Uh, and there's a lot of great rock and roll stories in it, like uh, from Pan, you know hanging out with Pantera, Metallica. There's a lot of fun, great rock and roll stories. But it's also, um, you know, it also has the other side of it, where this heartache, where the murder of my brother, uh, and how I reacted to that, and therapy, and uh, how it, it was really ugly. And from what I'm hearing, after all the great reviews we've had on this book, and thankfully it's done well, uh, is like this is more like it's helping people deal with their and cope with their loss, either loss or abandonment. So I'm getting more, even though there's a lot of great rock and roll stories in it, it's helping people, which I've gotten so many, so many letters and messages from it about how this book has helped them, and, uh, help, help people and just get, just see it a different way. Because look, the truth is, if I can get through it, Anybody can get through it. That's the way I look at it. So it's just, it's really cool and fulfilling to hear that. So it's, uh, it's more than just like the typical rock and roll book from what I'm hearing, which is great to hear. That's what I meant to do anyway. I mean, you obviously do address a lot of hard times, like you had just mentioned. What would be some advice you would offer to someone to push through and chase your dreams like you did? Well, the whole thing is, um, never say die. Keep that in your head. Never say die. You get, you know, Life is tough, man. Let's face it. It's look. I'm not preaching to anybody. I just tell my story how I how I dealt with it. How I still deal with it. Quite honestly, <clears throat> when you get hit, you get beat down. You have to get up. You know, you got to think about it. It's like, how do I how do I get out of this? You brush yourself off and take another step. <clears throat> so for me, it's a natural progression, and uh, it 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 feels like since I was young, I had I've had to do that. So um, you just have to really have to. The never say die kind of attitude. It's just like, look, I'm, do, I'm doing this. And just be, you know, it, it's a positive thing. It's like, look, I'm not staying down. I'm getting up. I'm brushing myself off. And I'm moving on because I know there's better things ahead. And it's really about keeping that that kind of attitude, that, that kind of fighting attitude uh, to, 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 to move on with your life. And it really means a lot to me because I learned that at a young age. I kind of, you know, I grew up in the Bronx. So it's that kind of attitude. It's like, you know, I'm not taking anything like that. No way. I'm not, I'm not staying down. I'm brushing myself off and I'm moving on. That's the way it is. And, um, and, and that's the way I still live to this day. What was it that inspired you to write? Well, okay, you know what? Truthfully, because uh, my co-writer, Joel MacGyver, uh, has written a lot of books in his day. We've been talking about it for a, a long time. It's just about, uh, it was about timing. Uh, and when to do it, because I've been on tour most of my life, obviously, and Joel's a busy guy, too. Joel called me while well, the beginning of COVID, and I was in my basement, as a lot of people were. A lot of people were just in their houses, you know, when everything shut down, and it was just the right timing. Joel called me, he says, this might be the time. And he said, I said, he goes, Frank, you think you're ready? I said, and I looked at the four walls in my basement. I said, you know what? I think I am. And it began, we started our first session, and... uh uh, via internet because he's in he's in England and um, it was a lot of sessions a lot of a lot of booze with bottles of booze on my stuff because there was a lot of pain going through it and a lot of tissues um, 
and we and we got through it. It was it was pretty awesome. It was a pretty cathartic experience. And it's pretty obvious Kiss has had such a huge influence on Anthrax. How was it bringing in Gene Simmons to do the forward? Well, it, that that came about where you know after we finished the book, um, Joel and I just had another conversation. It's like who who would be best to to write a forward? Who we want? We had some names that we really wanted, and uh, Gene was at the top of the list. I mean, he might have been number one. And I and Joel just brought it up to me. So he goes, "Well, he goes, how about Gene? I, you know, you think it's you think he'll?" Uh, I said, "I said straight out." I said, there's no way, Gene, I, you know, I was just convinced there's no way, Gene, Gene is too busy, there's no way he's going to take time to write it forward. Don't you know, Joel made a call, and Gene said, I would love to write uh, Frank's forward, and he wrote a beautiful, beautiful forward, because for people who haven't read my book yet, uh, if you're a Kiss fan, I have to say this, I've never, and I'm a diehard Kiss fan, I've never heard Gene write like this, I've never heard him speak about his family like this, like his um, his mom and his dad, specifically his dad. I've never heard him speak about his dad, uh, and I didn't know the story of him not knowing the whole his whole dad thing. I met his mother before, and she, God rest her soul, she was a beautiful woman. Um, it was just very, it, it was very touching, and I've never seen. I read a lot of Gene Gene Simmons interviews. I've never read him. I've never read anything like that from Gene, and I'm very thankful and grateful that he did such a beautiful job with it. So if you haven't read the book yet, that, that's definitely something to dig into at first. If there were to be a biopic based on your book, who would you see playing yourself? Oh, man, it's a good question, man. Um, um, he's got to have an inner anger. <laughs> <laughs> the, dude, the dude's got to have an inner anger. Uh, I, you know, I, I'll know it when I meet him, <laughs> you know what I mean? Cause he's got to have a, a rage, a rage in his eyes. And as I've been told, I have, um, it, it's just from the, my history. So, um, I, I don't know. That's a good question. That's a really good question. I'll have to think about that. You know what, from a fan's point of view, and I hope I don't butcher his name, I'm, you know, if he grows his hair a bit longer, I'm thinking maybe Kim Oates, he was in uh, Sons of Anarchy. Is that his name? Oh, yeah, dude, yeah, I know who you are. That's good. You know what? That's a good choice. That's mm -hmm. a good choice. Yes, of course. Wow. Yeah, I could totally see that. <laughs> that would be fun. That's a good choice. I didn't even think that way. Very cool, man. Yeah, all right. I'll take him. Huh. I'll choose him. And you have mentioned your book covers so many different topics between, like, you know, the early days and hanging out with some of the biggest names in metal and also covering a lot of your personal life and a lot of hard times you went through. What are you really hoping for fans to get out of reading your book? Well, there's, there's a couple of things. First off, I want to, to let them know, when I first started writing this book with Joel, I said to him, Joel, I don't want to write your, your obligatory metal rock and roll book. That doesn't make sense to me because there's so many great ones out there. I want to tell my story, but I want to tell it like this. I want to say, I want people to open the book and feel like as they read, I'm sitting with them at a bar having a beer or a coffee and two, it's just two people just talking. That's it. That's all. I want it like a conversation. And the great thing about it is I've heard that from so many people. Now it feels like I'm talking to them and that's exactly what I, so it's exactly what I want to happen. And it did because so many people are coming to me and saying that. So, um, yeah, it's, I want them to get, I want them to see the story. It's really the story of a person like anybody, like anybody in life. You, you get knocked down in life and you have to pick yourself up because it, it doesn't make sense not to. It doesn't because life is rough on everybody. Yes. And then, then thankfully, I got some success with the band of Anthrax. But life is still a struggle for everybody. I mean, it doesn't matter what you do for a living. It's just a struggle. This is a story of how I cope with it until to, today. I mean, I still have anger issues and all that stuff. I've still had to go to therapy just to to deal with my past demons, all that stuff. I, I just think it's a way, you know, and people put themselves into my lap, which is kind of cool. They, they see what I've done. They say, well, maybe Frank did it like this. And this is what I've heard straight from the messages from people, what, what they've given me. If Frank did it, maybe I can do this too. I mean, it is, it's more like a just move on, man. It's just like, don't get stuck in, in your own clutter. It's really just like, Brush yourself off. I keep saying that, 
because it, it really means a lot when I say when you fall, you got to brush yourself off and move on. And uh, Again, the, the rock and roll stories are fun reliving my great days of touring with Pantera, Metallica. There's a lot of great, fun stories um, that are really, or really fun to reminisce about. But there's also another side of it. So it, it's got a lot of stuff for everybody. It's got a lot of really cool, fun um, anecdotes in it. So uh, And uh, just kind of self-help. Now, people are going into the self-help market with this, with this book. That's what I've heard. I'm doing self-help interviews now, which is kind of cool because people are getting something out of this book. That means a lot to me. That is great. I love everything you just put out there. And, of course, the stigma that surrounds, like, mental health and everything like that. For someone that is admired, such as you are, to say that you've gone through therapy and everything like that for, you know, coping, I think that's huge. Thank you for putting that out there. Oh, it's, it means a lot to me because th there's a lot of people hurting. And I think people are afraid to take that first step into a therapist's chair or couch, whatever you want to call it. And I was the same way. I was absolutely the same way, especially after my brother was murdered. I was a mess, and you'll read it in the book. I was going, I was definitely going to a dark side where I wanted revenge and all that stuff, and I, I was going for it. And if you read the book, you'll understand the story. And either way, I was going <laughs> to, I was going to die or I was going to go to jail. It was a really ugly, ugly time, and therapy and, and good family around me really rallied around me and, uh, and helped me out. So I, I'm a proponent, absolutely, of therapy and helping. Go get yourself help. I think it's really important. And what do you see as far as plans for yourself and the rest of the band uh, for the rest of the year and going into 2023? Well, I personally just came out um, 10 days ago. I came up with an EP um, called Then I'm Gone. If people haven't checked it out, it's on iTunes and all the streaming services. You can get it, Apple, Apple Music, all that stuff. Um, and rare, I have to say this because my publisher put it out. It's called rarebird, rarebirdlit.com. So it's rarebirdlit.com. It's all, if you, you look at me on my socials, the, at the Frank Bellow, it's all there. Uh, so it's just, that EP came from, after writing the book, I, I stirred up a lot of stuff that I didn't know. I, I thought I put away with therapy, but when I wrote the book, it all came up again. And when I'm in a bad way, uh, emotionally and, and mentally, I pick up a guitar and I write songs. Uh, so I wrote these songs right after it. Uh, and there's a lot of them um, you'll hear in the songs. It's a, it's a three song EP. Uh, and uh, it really made a lot of sense to do that. So it came out 10 days ago. So that's what I'll be doing. I'll be promoting that. Uh, Anthrax is currently writing a record. So and uh, we're doing a tour, I think, starting January 17th. Uh, with Black Label Society and Exodus. Uh, that's a full American run. Um, with the second, actually the second leg of the tour. We did the first leg in the summer, which was awesome. Uh, we did that with Hey, hey, hey Breed, but this time around we have Exodus. So there's a lot going on. You know, we're, we're, we're pretty busy right now, and then we're, we're still writing a record, and we're going to be re recording it next year. And out of 11 studio albums, what is one album from Anthrax you would suggest to a new fan and why? Okay, what everybody says, and I'm just going by what the fans say. You know, if, with the, the record that made Anthrax, or I think broke us, is Among the Living. So start there. And then you'll get a little flavor of it, and then you go on, and then it's your choice, because a lot of people like a lot of the records around that. And the current last two records, you know, um, that we've done, are a good taste of where we're at now that everybody seems to call uh, some of our best work, which I'm really proud of. Because um, at, th at this stage in our career, we've been around 40 years, people are saying we're doing our best work now. But I say start with Among the Living, and um, they can go, there's so many, there's so many, and then you choose yourself, just give yourself a little tester, see what you like, but uh, there's a lot of them. Most people buy most of the records. I remember back in 2013, it was actually when you guys headlined the New England Metal and Hardcore Fest, it was Among the Living in its entirety. That was great. And I also remember yeah. that was the night the um, the guy that committed the Boston Marathon bombing was apprehended, and you guys dedicated I Am the Law to Boston PD. That was awesome. Yeah, because they, that was awesome that they did that. And uh, obviously, that was a tough time. Um, that was, again, a we have a crazy world, my friend, as we all know. And stuff like that is just, 
it's just crazy. So when you can apprehend somebody like that and and make people have peace, oh, well, because that's all we're really looking for is peace in our day. It's, it's come on, man, life is too crazy. Let's slow it down and get back to reality. You know. So yeah, my my my, my tip my hat to the Boston police for sure. Is there anything that we haven't gone over that you'd like to throw in? Oh, you know, there's a lot of stuff going on. Um, yeah, but besides the tour for BLS, uh, my, my EP, please check it out if you can, because it's, it's just me doing it. Uh, it's a, it again, it's go, look at, you can go to my socials at, at the Frank Bello. I'm on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, blah, blah, blah. Um, and yeah, and there's this video on YouTube. It's called uh, Then I'm Gone, Frank Bello, Then I'm Gone. Check that one out, too. Give it some thumbs up, I hope. Uh, so I'm trying to promote that. The book, obviously. I'll probably be doing some solo shows eventually um, with that. And that, that's really it, man. I thank you for doing this. Thank you so much for your time. Again, I've been such a huge fan, and I can't wait to read the book. So, you know, thank you for your time, especially. Cool, man. 